Okay, so a few months ago I made a video on the 13 inch M4 MacBook Air for programming and in that video I found that the MacBook was getting very very hot which made it uncomfortable to use and pretty much unusable for programming I would say and some people recommended that I try the 15 inch M4 MacBook Air because I guess since it's a bigger frame uh, maybe it has better air circulation so it wouldn't get as hot when using it. So that's what I'm about to do now. I just ordered a 15 inch M4 MacBook Air and I'm about to go to Apple to pick it up so I can get started on this video. So just picked up the 15 inch M4 MacBook Air. Now I'm about to head home, uh, we'll put it to the test. Well, first I'm gonna set it up. I'll show you guys everything that I installed on it just so that you know what's on it because that could also affect performance a bit, I would think. Also, I won't actually put it to the test today. I'll wait until tomorrow because I know when you first get a MacBook, there's always some sort of background process going on to set it up when it's new. So I don't want that to affect the, the performance or any of the overheating. starting I want to go over how I'm setting up the MacBook so you have an idea of what I've installed as that may have some impact on performance as well. To give you an overview of what's on my Mac, I've installed Google Chrome as my default browser, VS Code and Xcode for code editors, and I have also set up Git, Homebrew and Anaconda as the Python package manager. I've also disabled all software running at startup to make sure that there's nothing unnecessarily open in the background. To start, I used Xcode for a bit doing some basic coding and running the simulator. At this point there were no issues as it was not really pushing the performance of the MacBook too much. So in order to better test its performance, I ran the Xcode benchmark project from GitHub which provides more standardized results. The repository also includes results from other popular Apple computers for different versions of Xcode making it way easier to compare performance. Before running the test, I followed the setup instructions by turning off the Wi-Fi, disabling all software running at startup, adjusting the battery settings and restarting the MacBook. With the MacBook plugged in, I can now run the test. So I'm currently running the Xcode benchmark test with the MacBook plugged in and it's already feeling very, very hot the same way that the 13 inch M4 MacBook Air felt. I'm thinking this is probably going to be overheating the same way. So yeah, I'll keep running the benchmark test. I'll keep testing it, I'll keep using it and I'll let you guys know what it feels like. But it seems to me like it's already having the same overheating issues that the 13 inch model did. It's quite unfortunate because I do like the MacBook Airs a lot, but it's looking like the M4 models might not be the best for programming. I did run the test a few times and it took the 15 inch M4 MacBook Air around 194 seconds, which does seem slow compared to the 13 inch model which ran it in only 151 seconds. At this point I began experiencing the same overheating issues I did with the 13 inch M4 MacBook Air. Not only does the top part of the MacBook get very hot, but also the keyboard itself. And while I feel that it's maybe not as hot as the 13 inch was, it's uncomfortable enough that I don't want to place my fingers on it to type. Because this MacBook is already experiencing some of the same overheating issues that I had with the 13 inch version, I'm almost tempted to stop running the benchmark test now and just tell you guys that I wouldn't use this MacBook for programming if I had a choice. I would probably just go with the MacBook Pro or one of the older uh, MacBook Airs. I believe with the M2 Air, I didn't have any issues at all. Uh, same thing with the M3 Air, I didn't have any overheating issues. So yeah, based on trying the 13 inch and the 15 inch M4 MacBook Air, I would say that this is probably not the best laptops for programming out there. So for any other student tasks like note taking, just reading books, watching videos, all of that would be perfect. I just don't think it would be that great for uh, heavy programming use as it would get very very hot and it would be uncomfortable to the point where I just wouldn't use it for programming. I do have to say though that it does get a little less hot than the 13 inch so if you definitely want to get an M4 Air for programming I would go with the 15 inch instead of the 13 inch. Also something else that I forgot to mention earlier this is the model assembled in Vietnam. Um, I don't know if that would actually change anything or not but some of you asked me about it in the last video so I just wanted to let you know. If you're going to be using it for web development, I ran the Speedometer Browser Benchmark, which simulates real-world interactions in web applications, such as adding to-do list items. The 15-inch M4 MacBook Air scored 790 runs per minute. For comparison, the 13-inch M4 Air scored 621 runs per minute, while the 13-inch M3 MacBook Air scored 513 runs per minute. 
And with the newer speedometer 3.0 version of the test, the 15-inch M4 MacBook Air got a score of 52.7. For comparison, the 13-inch M4 Air got a score of 50.5, while the 15-inch M3 MacBook Air scored 40.2 and the M4 MacBook Pro scored 48.9. For Python tests, I start with the Python Mandel Broad algorithm as it pushes the CPU to test how powerful it is. The 15M4 MacBook Air ran it in only 40 seconds. For comparison, the 13-inch M4 Air ran it in 40 seconds as well, and the 13-inch M3 MacBook Air in 47 seconds. Now let's run the TensorFlow autoencoder. After setting up the development environment with Anaconda, I ran the autoencoder and the neural network processed and reconstructed the 10 input images in only 12 seconds. For comparison, the 13-inch M4 Air ran it in 14 seconds, while the 13-inch M3 Air took 17 seconds. That was all for today's video. If you made it this far, make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.